you don't think you're getting the right amount of power from your solar panels or you're getting no power at all, I'm going to go over a couple of different tests in order to make sure your panels are operating correctly. This is Mike with RPS Solar Pumps. While this is going to apply directly to our panels, it also applies to all solar panels on the market. I'll show you a couple of tests and things to look out for when setting up your panels to make sure they're operating correctly. By far the most common cause of low power output of your solar panel is an obstruction or other shadow on your array. The way most solar panels are wired are that all the cells are wired in series. So here we have a little edge corner protector that comes for shipping on our panel. We want to make sure these are all removed. Right here it's blocking about 25% of one of the cells. This will actually current limit all of the other cells that are in series. So blocking 25% of one cell can cause a loss of around 25% of power across the entire array. So for this 100 watt panel, it's only gonna output around 75 watts. So we wanna make sure any corner protectors are removed and make sure there's no shadows on it. We have a great video about shadowing and cleaning your panels linked in the description below. This shows real-time power output and how a small shadow affects output of the entire solar array. Okay, so you removed all the obstructions or any shadows on your array and you still either aren't getting any power or you're getting low power. For this, I'm going to go over the other tests we want to perform. You want to do these tests on nice sunny days. It's going to make troubleshooting much easier. As you can see here, we have our panel and full sun on it. You're going to need a multimeter for some of these tests. One like this is harder to do current, but also does the voltage measurements very well. I prefer a multimeter like this. This is a clamp-on style multimeter. We can clamp this over our wire in order to measure current, plus we can test voltages using our two probes. I'm going to go over a couple of those measurements right now with the panel. The first measurement we want to do is just called open circuit voltage of our solar panel. That is the voltage that the solar panel is putting out under no load. It's called VOC or voltage open circuit. So we're going to take our multimeter here and we're going to set it to V for volts. And in this case it defaults to AC voltage. We're going to use the function button and switch it over to DC volts. From here we can take our probes and we can put them down into our MC4 connectors in order to make contact with the terminals. It really doesn't matter which one we connect to which, we'll either get a positive or a negative voltage depending on which one we connect. And here you can see full sun we're getting 21.5 volts and that's a good reading for this type of panel. On the back you'll see specs of all your panels so you should be able to match up the measurement VOC that we're getting here to the spec on the back of your panel to make sure it's outputting the right voltage. If you're getting a strange low voltage and you're in full sun and there's no shadows on it that can be a sign of an electrical connection problem. I'm going to go over what things to look for when you think you might have an electrical connection problem. So that is our voltage measurement called VOC, voltage open circuit. The next measurement we're going to do is our current measurement. That's also called ISC, that's current short circuit. What we're going to do is we're going to short the two connections together and then do a current measurement with our clamp on meter in order to detect what short circuit current we have. Again, this spec should be on the back of your panel. For this 100 watt panel, we're looking for right around 5 amps or so. So I'm going to take my meter again, and this time I'm going to set it to A for amps. It also might say I, which stands for current. Usually there's a couple of different ranges. I'm going to use the lower range, which is 60 slash 600 amps. I don't need to use the 1000 amp, we won't be that high. So again, it defaults to AC, and for this specific meter, I need to push the function button to bring it to DC current. From here, I'm going to short out my two connections. This won't damage the panels. They are okay to be shorted together in order to get our ISC, current short circuit measurement. You do want to be a little careful if you have a very large high voltage array. It can be a little bit dangerous in order to do this connection. But for 100 volt, it's no problem doing this and opening and closing this connection. So I've shorted them together and then I'm going to use their clamp on meter in order to detect the current. So right now we're getting right around 5.5 amps or so. And that's great. That matches up exactly with what the back of our panel says. 
So that matches up to the, what the back of our panel says. This is a very good sign all the electrical connections are good and our solar panel is putting out the right power. So those are two different measurements, VOC and ISC, but unfortunately they're both imperfect for testing solar panels because we're not actually testing it under load. We're testing it under full current and we're making sure we have full voltage out of here. What we are not testing is the panel under full maximum power conditions. Unfortunately, that test is a little bit harder and requires specialized equipment, so you're not gonna be able to do it out in the field. But with these two measurements, we can basically troubleshoot most of our panel issues in order to determine if we have a problem. So let's say we did our voltage measurement and we're getting low voltage, or we did our ISC, our current measurement, and we're getting low current. As long as we test it on a nice sunny day, we can use those measurements and say we probably need to do some mechanical troubleshooting of our solar panel. The first and most common issue we want to check for is a loose connector. So the way these MC4 connectors are manufactured is the internal contact is either crimped or soldered to our wire and then inserted into the connector and it needs to be fully inserted and locked in place. What happens sometimes is the terminal is not fully inserted into our MC4 connector. So when they're plugged together, they don't make full contact. Sometimes they'll even make partial contact, which makes troubleshooting a little bit more tricky. It means we can get our voltage measurement, but we might not get full current on our current measurement because it's unable to conduct all the current through there. So to make sure our terminals are fully seated inside our MC4, we're gonna wanna remove or loosen up the back gland. Sometimes these can be on a little tight and you're gonna need some wrenches in order to get it loose. So here we unscrew and loosen up the back waterproofing gland and now we can give it a good pull and tug to see if it's fully seated in there. If you can pull on your MC4 and it pops out, then that means it probably wasn't fully seated and you want to really push it in tight. Sometimes you hear a click and you'll see that it's nice and fully seated inside of our MC4 connector. So we'll want to do this to both of the terminals. Plus, you'll want to check any other connections in your system. That can include your extension wire. So if you've checked your MC4s and they're all fully seated and you're still not getting the full voltage or your full current, there's another thing you want to check. On the back of all the panels, is what's called a junction box. You can see here, I've already removed it so we can see what's inside. So here our wires are coming in to our terminal strip. There's three different connection methods that are used here. One is a soldered connection, second one is a crimped on connection, and the third is a clamping connection with a screw. You're also gonna see our diodes here. We can talk about what those diodes do in another video. But what you're gonna to wanna to check is you're gonna to wanna to make sure these screws are fully tightened down if you have screws. If you have a crimped connection, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's tightly crimped around your wire and that you have a secure connection. We can see here, both of them are fully seated. Sometimes if they're screws, these can vibrate and rattle loose in shipping, or they just weren't fully tightened in the first place. Same with the crimps. If the crimping tool was slightly worn out, they might not be getting great crimps on it, and you might have a slightly loose connection. In that case, you can take your pliers and you can crimp it and fully crimp it down. What's even better is if you have a soldering iron, you can go in there and re-solder the wire to make sure you have a nice, good connection to your panel. This is not as common of an issue as loose MC4s, but it still does happen from time to time. And the good part is, if you can find this and fix it, it'll save you from having to ship your panel back and getting a replacement. Those are the most common issues we see with solar panels that either have low output or no output. The solar panels are very simple, just consist of the solar cells connected on series and our wires bringing the power out. Under very rare circumstances, you can go look very closely at your panel and see if something happened with, say, the soldering of the bus bars and interconnects from cell to cell. Very rarely, there'll be a manufacturing defect which shorted out this edge of the cell or shorted out uh, other parts of the panel which are causing no power output. Unfortunately, there's no fix for those and you're gonna have to swap out your solar panels. But otherwise, with these few simple steps, you're gonna be able to diagnose and troubleshoot any solar panel or low power output issue. So that's troubleshooting your panels. This is Mike with RPS Solar Pumps. All we do here at RPS Solar Pumps is solar water pumping. If you need to pump water, whether it's from a well, an above ground source, or anywhere else, give us a call. We can get you set up with the system today.